visiting with us. It's a joy to have you. We're so glad that you're here. Uh, at the Lord's name, we welcome you. If you are uh, uh, a member of another LCMS church, or one in which we fellowship, we invite you to join us for the Lord's Supper. Uh, if you are not uh, and you're baptized, we invite you to come forward for a blessing. Uh, and just when you come up, you can just cross your arms and uh, speak the Lord's uh, gift. Uh, word blessing to you. Um, but a couple of announcements today before we begin. The first one is uh, we, it is a joy to announce that we're receiving a new member this morning. Uh, that Sam Smith will be uh, joining, uh, uh, being a part of our fellowship. Uh, and we're glad to have him. He's been here for a while and he's settling in the area for right now. Uh, but it, it's great to have him as we still rejoice. Uh, in the Hartwig family, being uh, new members as well. <coughs> so, um, be in prayer for our school as they have begun uh, the, the first part of the TKK and the, the TK and K stuff. Uh, there's, there's new kids, new families. I think by the time the fall begins in September, when all the kids come, did she say 108 kids currently? 100, 105. Okay, Daisy. Uh, 105 kids. So that's 105 families that we can pray for. So be praying for them. Uh, it's a joy uh, to kind of give them uh, to us here to, to serve and to love. Uh, and then there's opportunities for you to help if you like to the school. And uh, you can respond to them as well. Um, if you would, uh, we'll begin with our opening hymn and turn to page 901. Our hymn 901. <laughs>
Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God, our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Setting four. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we've sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Forgive us our sins and be us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. He 
Almighty and everlasting Father, you give your children many blessings, even though we are undeserving. In every trial and temptation, grant us steadfast confidence in your loving kindness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. my salvation will come, and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it, and holds fast to my covenant, these are what I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 11. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. For I myself am an Israelite. A descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles. And as much as I am an apostle of the Gentiles, I have magnified my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation to the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the death? As regards to the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake. But as regards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were one time disobedient to God, but now you have received mercy through their disobedience. So they too now have been disobedient. In order that the mercy shown to you they also may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience that he may have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come in with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
We hear again from our gospel reading in Matthew 15. And Jesus went away from there, withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon, and behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he didn't answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she's crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Faith holds on to Jesus and won't let go. Faith sees everything that would speak against a gracious God. And faith turns to Jesus and won't let go. But faith hears the holy law. Convict the sinner. The law that accuses and tears down the sinner. And even in hearing that which separates sinners from a holy God, faith clings to God anyway and clings to God even more and won't let go. So when faith hears God say, I am holy, and you must be holy, and hears God say, Every person, every one of you is a liar. Or hears him say, I am a jealous God and a consuming fire. To God, faith says, no, this can't be. I must have you as a gracious God. And if you are my Lord, you will be my Lord because you are forgiving and gracious to those lost and dead. Because you see the sinner and instead of Casting me into hell with the hammer of the law, you call the sinner to yourself. You bind yourself to the sinner with your name, and you save. Faith even argues with God. If you, O oh God, are to be my Lord and have me as your own, you must save me. You must justify me, for I can't do it myself. Not at all, and if you don't make me your own, I will never be yours. So faith makes an argument. It argues, and we could say it even wrestles with God against the accusation of the law and his abandonment of sinners. But faith argues grace. It begs for mercy. And God wants to hear this argument. So the Canaanite woman approaches Jesus. The Gospel of Mark tells us that she had heard about Jesus. She heard good news about it. She heard and believed that he could and would help save her demon-afflicted daughter. But according to the law, she shouldn't have even been doing that because she's a Canaanite woman. She's not even allowed in the temple. She eats unclean food, lives with unclean people. She's the worst kind of sinner. For, to, for her to even present herself to Jesus, knowing that he's Lord, he's the son of David, the true king of Israel, this is already the beginning of her argument. Since she wouldn't have been there, even she shouldn't have been there, and the apostles, they're fed up, they're annoyed, they want her gone. Still she cries out, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, my daughter is severely oppressed by him. Wow. But Jesus gives no answer. The disciples answer, send her away. She's crying out after us. Then finally, Jesus answers and says this. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that should have ended it. He was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. 
He's God in the flesh. He made everything. His word should be considered final. But she doesn't take that as the final word of God. So she speaks to him three short words. Lord, help me. Jesus answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Did Jesus just call her a dog? <laughs> Isn't that enough to finally get her to be quiet? <clears throat> she won't give up on the argument. Yes, Lord, she says. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. This is her argument of faith. The Canaanite woman won't let go of Jesus. Even over and against everything in front of her, she still hangs on and clings to Jesus. Then Jesus answered her, O oh woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. This woman has faith in a great thing, the greatest thing. Her faith isn't great because it's so strong or stronger than somebody else's but great because of what it holds on to, what it clings to, the greatest thing. She has faith in a Lord who is merciful, even to dogs, even to those who are unclean. He is merciful to the filthiest sinner. And she doesn't deny that she's unclean, that she, according to the law, is rightly called a dog. The woman has faith that even when she hears the law of God condemning her, she still won't let him go until she has him for his forgiveness, for his mercy, and for his grace. But she has faith even though everything in her world is going wrong. We wouldn't look at her life and say, wow, that's a great life. Even when her daughter is oppressed by demons, when the apostles want her gone, even when Jesus says he only came for lost sheep of Israel, she shows that faith holds on to Jesus and even argues with Jesus until he blesses. Sounds kind of like Jacob wrestling with God. Or the Psalms, or many of the Old Testament who won't let go until God brings them His blessing. So faith argues, we could say, or even wrestles with God. <clears throat> because when faith hears God say, I, the Lord your God, am holy, and you must be holy. Faith doesn't look to its own work, but to the greater faith. To God himself and says, Lord, if I'm going to be holy, it's, it will be because you make me holy. So, Lord, make me holy as you promised in my baptism. And when faith hears, God say in his law, every one of you is a liar. Faith argues, if I, O oh Lord, am going to be counted not a liar, but honorable. <laughs> If I'm going to stand before you worthy, it will be because you justify me by your word of gospel. And you declare me righteous and worthy for the sake of your blood. So, Lord, let me eat and drink your body and blood according to your promise for the forgiveness of my sin. And when faith hears God say, I am a jealous God and a consuming fire, Faith says, no, Lord, to me you can't be a consuming fire, for you have made me your own. I must have you as a gracious God, and I will hold on to you daily for the forgiveness of my sin, for the comfort of your grace, and for everlasting. So faith argues with God. But it's the argument that God rejoices in, and here Jesus commends it. He gave us the argument. Came from God. It's His promise. His oath to you and to me. <clears throat> he put it on our lips when He said, 
I am your God and you'll be my people. He put it on us, on our lips, and he gave it to us when he told us, call upon me in every trouble, for every need. It's not an argument of arrogance or bullying God into doing what we want. It's not an argument meant to avoid the question and confuse like we hear in arguments all the time on earth. But it is the argument of faith, of holding on to God, sometimes even against God. Of saying to him, I've heard your law, and it's covered me in shame, but I won't let you go until you hear, I hear your gospel, so I can stand before you in honor. I've heard your holiness, it leaves me shaking in fear, but I won't let you go until I have your word of grace cleansing me to make me holy. It's my only hope. It's the argument of the unclean woman saying to Jesus, I must have you as my Lord. Even if it's only crumbs for your table. For your table is life. My only hope. And if I eat from your table, I'll lack no good thing. So faith holds on, clings to Jesus and won't let go. And when we do find ourselves letting go, or finding ourselves trying to justify ourselves, that's not faith, but that's our sinful flesh. And so we repent daily of our sinful flesh, turning to the Lord to say, forgive me, have mercy on me, Lord, save me. And then daily faith holds on to the Lord for the forgiveness that he gives, rejoicing that he came for the lost sheep of Israel, and that means you. For Jesus has called you to, along with the Canaanite woman, into his Israel. His own church, which he purchased with his own blood. That's the promise of baptism for you today. <clears throat> and over and against the devil, your sinful flesh, the world, the new man of faith is raised up to walk in faith by the Lord's gift of baptism. And faith looks to the oath and promise of Jesus alone, to the promise of the one who's crucified for you and for your salvation. And faith holds tightly to God and his promise in his mercy for sinners like you and me. That's what we call the New Testament in his blood. Faith contends, argues, even wrestles with anything that goes against that. Not stopping until it hears the sure and certain word of the Lord's blessing. Clinging to the Lord's words, this is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Here in his holy supper, is Jesus truly present in his body and blood to be for you? And faith here in the Holy Supper, in baptism, in the absolution, finds its object or the greatest thing. The one who the scriptures say is the author and finisher of your faith. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame. And he did it for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep and guard your hearts in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we are excited to welcome a new member. Uh, so Sam, if you will come forward. <laughs> Can I share that with you? Because I love mine back here. I'm trying to do what I want. I'll let you see what Sure. All right. Please say it. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, whoever confesses me before men, I will confess also before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, 
to the God of all grace and joyfully give an answer to what I ask you now in the name of the Lord. Do you acknowledge this day in the presence of God in this congregation the gifts that God has given you in your baptism? Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired Word of God and the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be true and faithful? I do. Do you intend to hear the Word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the Word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? I do, by the grace of God. Do you desire to become a member of this congregation? I do. Will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts God has given you? I will, with the help of God. Well, upon this, your confession of faith, I acknowledge publicly that you are a member of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation. Receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord God, Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for your great goodness in bringing your son and daughters, your sons and daughters to the knowledge of your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit they may continue steadfast in one true faith and in fellowship of this congregation as we all together await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Sam? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> Actually, you don't get to be seated. <laughs> Something different in the service, and it's just all. The new guy messes it up. So we stand, uh, let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. <coughs> Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your children on earth may look to you alone for every good gift and through the fervent love and through fervent love our, of our lives. Turn us away from false teaching and all evil living. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, let your name be holy among us as it is in heaven. Grant us grace that your name may be hallowed by us in all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the faithful administration of your sacraments for the forgiveness of sin. Turn away from us Turn us away from all false doctrine and false prayers, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant that your kingdom may come to us and grow through the preaching of your gospel. Send your Holy Spirit to those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom, so that they may be brought to know your Son, Jesus Christ, in the true faith, through the fellowship of your church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Break and hinder every plan and purpose of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Keep us steadfast in your word till we die. Grant that we may be strengthened by your spirit to do and suffer your will, both in life and in death, in good and in evil things. 
We ask this grace especially for those who are going through difficult times, including Mary, Tina, Cindy, Ed, Helena, Bernie, Linda, Lance, Jan, Tim, Kristen, and Rick. Give to all your people the faith and strength to pray, not my will, but thine be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us, Father, our daily bread. Preserve us from greed and selfish cares. Grant us with government and protect us from violence. Bless Joseph, our president, Gavin, our governor, and all those given to protect the innocent and the defenseless and bring to justice those who do harm. Help us to trust that you will provide for every need so that our lives may overflow with thanksgiving. Be especially with those suffering from the fires in Maui, including those at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Lord, in your mercy. Here we are. <clears throat> forgive us, Father, our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Root out all bitterness and hatred from the hearts of your people that they may be filled with your loving forgiveness. Let us look upon our brothers and sisters in the church, not in condemnation and judgment, but with eyes of kindness, forgiveness, and joy. Grant us a good conscience before you that no sin would ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect us, Father, in every time of trial and temptation. Help us by your Spirit to subdue our sinful nature, to despise the sinful world and its ways, to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Keep us away from conversations of gossip and accusation, letting our tongues speak words of encouragement and consolation, honoring our neighbor's reputation, always extolling your gifts. Lord, in your mercy. Keep and guard us, Holy Father, that the devil of the world and our sinful nature may not deceive or mislead us into false faith, despair, or other great shame or vice. Deliver us from every evil of body and soul, including those in the path of the hurricane. Be with those in Southern California and Mexico, and to all who may be near, Protect them and those affected by the fires throughout the world. Deliver us from all pestilence or anything that would harm us. Protect us both now and forevermore that we may at last leave this valley of sorrow with joy and enter into the company of your saints in light, joining in their song of praise that never ends. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns through all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we love and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet, in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trusted him. We give you thanks for the redemption you prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy. You would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.